I didn't scream. This is the new Calm Orion. I swear this intro gets longer every time, doesn't it? But it's a good intro. Shout out to Lars, Lars Soderberg, for doing that intro. Guys, we made it. We're live again. Welcome back. It, you know, that 11 thing, building up to 11, I got all excited. Then once, now we're at episode 14. We're at episode 14. You realize that? I don't think I expected us to get to 14. And maybe, I don't know how far we'll get past it. I don't know. We, we don't know what we're going to do. But but we're this is like a thing we're celebrating. We're like... If we were a, a child, uh, we would have been one year past our bar mitzvah. <laughs> is, that, is that a thing you celebrate? You survived one year past your bar mitzvah? I don't know. But anyway, welcome, guys. Welcome to the stream. We're back again this week. This week is actually something of a, of a continuation. Uh, if you didn't read the description or if you maybe you just like to be surprised every week when I tell you. But we were making music together last week in a sort of collaboration with your submissions and me noodling on top of them and uh we, we we got through a couple of tunes but people enjoyed it i enjoyed it it was fun to hear what you guys are working on so i thought we would do a another round of that this was round two this week with some of the stuff you guys submitted i didn't open up submissions again for more people i, I wanted to give people who submitted stuff last week and didn't get a, a chance to be on the stream one, another chance one more chance Maybe you still won't make it on the stream, but that is the luck of the draw. That is how this game works, I suppose. But let me tell you, so here's the thing as people are getting on the stream and I'm, I'm hanging out. Um, I, I don't know if you can tell from looking around here, but I'm all alone. Like I'm always all alone here. Oh, sad trombone. I didn't mean it that way. What I mean is, um, I'm always alone in my home office, but, uh, I'm extra alone this time because I don't have Stefan. Stefan, who is my fearless companion, who goes into the chat, which I now have over here to keep an eye on. He He's the guy that goes in there and makes sure that, you know, everyone's playing nice. There's no trolls in there. There's no bots in there, all that stuff. And uh, and then he engages with you guys. He's if, if you see comments going on during the stream, that's Stefan having fun with you guys. And Stefan, like a disloyal deserter, has decided to go on vacation. That asshole. No, he, he, it's a well-deserved vacation, and I hope, Stefan, I hope, Stefan, you're not watching. If you're watching this, you might as well just get in the chat. So please, I hope you're not watching. I hope you're the one person I hope is not watching the stream and um, enjoying yourself. You have earned yourself quite a vacation, and I hope... I hope, uh, like the movie Office Space, I hope you do nothing and it's everything you thought it could be. So I hope you enjoy that. But that, what that means for us today is that I'm going to be kind of multitasking more than I al already am. You know, I, I multitask when I s switch around, you know, when I do this sort of stuff and I'm switching these shots. But I'm also going to be multitasking by trying to keep an eye on the comments. And I hope I do an okay job with that. They go by quick. You guys are chatty. And um, I would say maybe it's worth us saying that if you're trying to get my attention, you will, you'll have a, at least a better shot of it if you are, uh, if you tag me in the com comments. So you do, I think maybe you guys know this better than me, but I think you do at Reason Studios and then you say your comment and then it sort of shows up in a little more visually flagged kind of way. It's something. We'll see how it goes. It's not it's not too great a burden. I mean, everybody who live streams on their own doesn't have a Stefan. We all don't have a Stefan in our lives. We wish we had a Stefan in our lives, but we don't all have a Stefan in our lives. I'm lucky enough to have a Stefan in my life 50 or 49 weeks of the year or whatever. He's going to be gone for, I think, three or four weeks. So, uh, anyway, so um, I'm keeping an eye here on you guys. Um Ryan need a Damon. Damon? Damon? I don't know what you mean there, Mark, but 
I whatever it is, I need it. Yes, I need it. Uh, someone's asking what my headphone model is. I think that's me. Uh, these, I believe they're called Masters and Dynamics or Master and Dynamic. And um, they're good. I, I got to say, I'm a fan of them. I'll, tur I'll turn to the side because they're pretty. Uh, but they are, um, th when I got these headphones, I was uh, initially impressed with the two parts that I want headphones to be good at, which is their low end is is representationally true. It's not like if you listen to AKG K240s, they're actually weak in the low end in a way that I guess people like it. I never loved it. Um, and then you listen to something like Beats. Those are like boosted in the low end in a not real way. These are true to what the low end really is as I hear them coming from my monitors. And they're good in the high end as well. So uh, for, a, for a closed headphone, you know, I don't know if you guys know about headphones too much, but closed back and open back, there's differences in how they... Uh, behave with high frequencies and gener generally speaking, going to be broad strokes here to answer your question, um, is that open back headphones are better at representing high frequencies, but they bleed. So you can't use them around a mic because if you, if you're singing or whatever, you'll get bleed into the mic a lot more easily. So people tend to live in closed back headphones uh, and they just take that little bit of a high end hit. These are still pretty good in the in the head and the high end. So, um, Ivan just asked the same thing. What brand of headphones? Uh, there you go. It just rewind Ivan. I just answered it. So anyway, I hope everyone's good. I hope you've had a good week of music making. Let me know in the comments. Um, and, um, just, yeah, let, let me know what you guys have been up to music wise. I have been, let me think of what I've done this week. Music wise. It's kind of, you know, when I, I've started talking about this on the stream and it's become a nice, sort of, um, I guess an accountability thing where it's like, I better have done something musically this week because otherwise I'll have nothing to, nothing to report to you guys. You guys are holding me accountable. Uh, but what have I been doing? Oh, well, here's, here's my first musical headline. Do you know what today is? It's actually, it actually is today. The 7th of July is a birthday. It's a pretty important birthday to me. It is, I'll show you here. It is this guy's actual birthday. It is, this guitar is 89 years young today. Born on this day, July 7th, 1931. You may say, Ryan, how do you know that that was born on this day, July 7th, 1931? Because... The fine folks in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, at the Martin Guitar Factory, actually kept really good records. When they started making the guitars as we know a guitar, they started making them, um, they, they say in 1833, we'll take their word for it. And for about 50 years, they just were making guitars. They were at a shop in New York, they were making guitars, everything was going fine. They relocated their shop to Pennsylvania, and they... Um, they, they thought, you know, we should probably start serial numbering these things and actually keeping track of them and doing like a more official kind of thing. I guess in, you know, in 18, that's a kind of weird span, 1833 into the late 1800s. That's you're crossing over the, the industrial revolution and things are becoming more, you know, there's bookkeeping and there's there's mechanization and there's all sorts of industrialization going on. And so as part of that, they, they thought we should start making numbers. So they they guessed they thought. I don't know how many we've made up until now, but let's say it's, and they, they picked a number and I can't remember what the number is, but let's say it was 10,000. So they said, we probably made 10,000 guitars in the last 50 years. We'll start at 10,001. And from then on, they started serializing all their guitars and then they would keep a ledger book. And so when they would stamp the serial number into the neck block of the guitar, that was how they were officially starting work on a guitar. And so that is sort of now a thing you can look up. You can actually look up the birth date that Martin Guitar stamped your guitar and begun work on your guitar, the date your guitar was actually born. And um, so anyway, I looked that one up and it was uh, July 7th. I put a little calendar reminder. I get a calendar reminder every year now. And um, that means next year it's going to turn 90. I should like, I should throw it a party. Wow, <laughs> a sad trombone, me alone throwing a party for a guitar in my room. No, that's no good. I should not do that. But anyway, I'll invite all you guys. You guys can all come to, to its 90th birthday party um, and bring it, I don't know, gifts like strings and stuff. Um, it is Korg 707 day, Mowgli says. 
And um, that is correct. That is correct. Yuhani catches it as well. It is 707 day. So um, everyone out there should be, you know, I don't know. Maybe, that's, maybe that should guide the type of music that we are making today. But, um, yeah. Nitro X uh, says he's working on a Juice World type guitar beat. That's cool. Uh, I love it. Sh- share it with us when you, when you got it. So Bobby, Bobby Rutz, thank you, uh, says happy birthday to my guitar. Thank you very much. I don't know why I say thank you. I didn't build it. I just, you know, I, I don't, I don't even think, I don't think of that guitar as something I even own. That's more like I have current custody of it and then someone else will later. And it's sort of, it has passed. I mean, when, after 89 years, I don't know how many people have owned it, but I, I certainly don't own it. It, it just is passing through people and uh, anyway, so uh, that's been going on. Now, here's another thing, and we'll get down to some music making. I wanted to share something else with you guys that I, I flagged, actually. I was listening to a uh, a podcast. There's a podcast out there. I'm, I, I guess I'm going to make a, a plug. I, it's not really a, an official plug or a paid plug or anything like that, but I, I'll, in order to mention this thing to you, I kind of have to plug it. So I was listening to the Switched on Pop podcast, which... Uh, this is where I'm going to go for the unsolicited plug. If you guys haven't listened to Switched on Pop, it is a really cool podcast. I have been, I don't know about you guys, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts recently just because of the nature of lockdown and quarantine and, you know, I'm out, you know, biking around and, and walking around the neighborhood, you know, doing the things we're allowed to go out and do, being active and stuff. And I, I tend to be consuming podcasts at a greater rate. And I've kind of... You know, the political podcasts that sometimes I'll listen to, like, they're a little a little bit too much when you're in the midst of a, a, a pandemic and when things are kind of on the tra- trajectory that they are in the U.S. where it's like, ugh, it's getting worse. So those aren't super fun to listen to. Uh, and so I've been branching out into other things. And Switched on Pop is so cool. It is, for a fan of music production in general, it is super interesting. You don't have to be a fan of pop music per se, though it certainly would, I guess, help if you have an appreciation for the craft that goes into pop music, because they do spend a lot of time talking about pop music, but, um, it's a really good, it's just a, a the, the, the two guys that do it, they, they talk about music theory, but in an approachable way, they talk about production. They talk about interpreting songs. They do all this cool stuff. It's definitely worth a listen. I, come away from every episode with ideas of things that I want to try or, or hold on to and take from it. But, um, uh, oh wait, uh, oh, oh, Goga, uh, Goga ask hiring. How can we submit our tracks? Uh, no, we're just, I'm going to be using stuff that was already submitted last week, a Goga. So, um, no, uh, no submitting of tracks. Uh, here's another uh, flagged one. This is where the flag is working. Thanks guys. That helps. Um, a lot of combinator patches with mapping to MIDI controller and Apex twin style sequencing with ARPS. Uh, is that, I guess what you've been doing? Uh, maybe that's the, the music you've been working on. Or is that what you're doing for 707 day? I guess. So, Anyway, um, so I'm listening to the Switched on Pop Pop podcast yesterday, and I was listening to an episode with Carly Rae Jepsen, who you probably know from her massive 2012 song, Call Me Maybe. And they're talking to her, and she's talking about the new album she's working on, and particularly a new song that's called something like Come Come Into My Window or Come Through My Window or something like that. And... She's talking. She worked on the song with Jack Antonoff, who's a producer who you may know by just name alone, Jack Antonoff. You may know him as one of the members of Fun, which had a few hits um, around the same time, 2012, before I, I think they disbanded or went on hiatus. Jack has launched his own rather successful production career. He collaborates with a lot of people. He was collaborating with Carly Rae Jepsen on this tune, and she said this thing, and I just loved it. And I was like, ooh. This is the kind of thing I'd love to share with you guys because it's the kind of thing that I I think we can all take to heart and I think we can all use in our music making. I think there's some inspiration to be had. There's some permission that she's giving us all. Uh, Ivan, is it free? If you're talking about Switched on Pop, it is. Or, uh, oh, the Stitcher app. I don't know if that's free. But anyway, uh, it's on, Switched on Pop is on, uh, you can get on the podcast app on an iPhone or um, presumably on Spotify, all all the places you get your podcasts. But so, I... I wanted to play this clip of Carly Rae Jepsen talking about working with Jack Antonoff and their process and the way that they work together 
and uh, take a listen to this. I thought this was pretty cool. The fun thing about Jack is that we both come at music in this really playful manner. So we're sort of like kids, like we dance the song out. We don't just like sit down and write it. We're like shouting things across the room. It becomes this really playful thing. Like I said, sometimes the beauty of writing with Jack is it's just sort of like this song happened and we were both here for it. No one remembers (laughs) how it appeared. But yeah, that one, I think that was kind of the part of the song where we were just dancing and pointing at each other and like shouting things. And I can't explain it. It's it's not very professional, but it was really (laughs) fun. It was very joyful. So I love that clip. I love that clip for a lot of reasons. I could I could almost dissect it on a sentence by sentence basis with things that I sort of take to heart on that, on that clip. Um, and in fact, actually that, that's the thing I learned from a, a music teacher is that, um, my, he, he used to give me a song and he would say every, there's a lesson in every bar. When you're learning a song, there's a lesson to be discovered in every bar that you're learning. So it's not just, that you are learning to play the song and checking it off a list, you know, you you can find sub lessons within each bar of music. And in, in a similar way, I feel like each sentence of that soundbite has like little sub lessons in there. But, um, uh, I, what I particularly loved about it. And the reason I, 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 while I was, I was out on a hike and I looked down at my phone and I marked the time cause I wanted to play it for you guys today. She says, and she kind of laughs, and she's almost sounds a little embarrassed. She's talking about this process where they were just um, making the song, and she's she, you know, they're just shouting things out at each other and stuff. And she says, "I know it's not really professional, but it was joyful." And she she says that almost in a "Please forgive me for not being professional" way. And I was like, "That is it. That is there's so much there. The professional thing. You know, we spend so much time." trying to, we're aspiring to a level of professionalism and that's that's not a bad thing but in the end when you actually are in the in the real flow of music making and when the best ideas are happening it's actually not a very professional thing if it was professional we'd be in boardrooms and in cubicles and you know professional's not as much as that's our aspiration that's actually not the mentality by which great music happens, you know, professional music making is making sure that you're, you've got your clock, digital clock source set to the right sample rate and that you are, you know, prepping your tracks correctly for stems. And if you're going to stem things out, that's, that's professional. But what she's saying is like this, this wasn't professional. It was joyful. That's the, the two words she, she, holds up these two things, professional and joyful. And she, she sort of says with a little bit of guilt, but I think it's actually what she's really doing here is she is making me realize that it's okay to, to not be professional and to be joyful. And if you're, if you're in a, what what she says earlier in the clip, she says, we danced the song out. Like I love, I just love so many parts of that clip. We danced the song out. We were shouting things across the room to each other and yeah, it wasn't professional, but it was joyful. That is like, oh man, I like if I could just sort of tattoo that into my brain and remember that in key moments when I'm making music. And it can be, I mean, for them, they're making music together. There's a very natural uh, give and take that happens when you are in a room with someone. But even on your own, you can adapt a little of, of that joyfulness into the process and not worry about sort of the professionalness. And and in fact, maybe that will be something of a guiding principle for me today as I start working with uh, your tunes, which why don't we get to it? Um, But yeah, maybe, you know, I'm going to be keeping my mind on what what some ways that we can make sure that I'm not getting bogged down in in professional aspiration or or some kind of like self-limiting critique and quality thing, but rather the, the fun parts. The, the, the stuff that we all got into music for in the first place. Let me take a quick look at the uh, chat here and just see if there's anything uh, need, needed to be said or responded to. Mark says, go with the flow. Absolutely. Um, the architect, spontaneous moments are the best. Absolutely. Uh, a question here. Reason Studios, when are you going to support MIDI out for Logic in a similar way to you did for Ableton? MIDI FX freeze don't work properly. Okay, so I don't know what MIDI FX freeze, I guess that maybe mean... 
Um, I'm, I'm not actually entirely sure what you mean by that uh, FB 1983, but uh, we do support MIDI out for Logic. And I think what you may mean is the being able to route, like print MIDI to a track. I'm not familiar enough with Logic to tell you that that does or doesn't work. Uh, I, maybe I'll take your word for it. And then if that's true, then I can probably assure you that people are looking into it. But I don't know. Um, DJ Divix, making music doesn't have to be a sterile process. That's right. Um, have fun, be crazy. The emotions show through. Yes, the emotions show through. This is a thing I've often uh, talked with about when I meet with artists and stuff. And I've I've, I've always been a fan of, um, when I listen to Beastie Boys albums, maybe I've even mentioned this on streams. When I listen to a Beastie Boys album, one of the things that always impresses me the most about their process is that they've managed to retain the fun that they were having when they were creating the beat all the way to the finished product. And there's so many chances along the way when you are, you know, you're getting into doing an extra take and comping vocals and, you know, maybe you're quantizing your notes. But there's all these decisions you make to try and perfect things. And a lot of times you end up ironing the fun out of a song and it becomes perfect but not fun. And when you listen to a Beastie Boys song, it's imperfect, but it's fun. And you, I mean, you hear them laughing. They're cracking each other up. They're, they're doing all these things. They put in these weird samples that shouldn't be there, but it works. And I love that about what they do, that they, they preserve the fun part. So yeah. Um, let's see, make a joyful noise. Uh, where's it from? Heard it somewhere. I don't know, but yes. Um, anyway. Okay. You guys are all Chat with each other. I'm not seeing other things in here. Creativity comes in the rules. Unprofessional. Creativity comes in the ruleless, unprofessional moment. Okay, that's a good way to say it, the architect. Yeah, it, it it can come from that, the unprofessional moment. Absolutely. You know, it's it's almost like, to some degree, I don't know, this is where my the analogy my drain, brain is drawing here. You know, when you're a younger, like when you were kind of teenager, classic teenager mentality for me was you'd kind of be hanging out with maybe be hanging out with older kids or, or just kids that you respect and thought were kind of the cool kids. And you suddenly had this pressure on yourself where you're like, I gotta, I gotta be cool. I gotta say something cool, do something cool, make a joke that makes them laugh. I gotta like, I, you know, and that's like, you're not, never, you're not, it's over. It's over at that point. If you are, if you're trying to put this pressure on yourself to be this thing, you're, it's over. It's, it's the moments when, you know, hanging out with people that, that you, I would always, as a, in high school in those moments, you know, those moments that were always fun and memorable were the moments where you kind of let go of that stuff and you just were having fun together and not worrying about what other people are thinking or how this might look to others or, or how, where you are in relation to your aspiration for coolness or funniness or whatever it is you were trying to aspire to in that moment. Music is no different. Uh, Reason Studios, what is the best Sampler that I can use in Windows. I want to sample an old VST. F get crashes a lot. I don't know. Um, see on if you guys want to answer them in the in the uh, comments there. I don't know the Windows side of things. I'm not quite sure. I would think you could do it in Reason. The Reason has samplers, and you can route. I'm sure there's a Windows utility where you can route things in, and uh, and 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 do it in Reason. I'm not sure, but, but help them out there, guys, in the comments. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and keep, you know, it's the hard thing when I'm monitoring comments is that I tend to read them as I'm first seeing them. And so let's hope that goes okay. I'm just going to kind of read them out. So don't, uh, don't mess with me by tagging me and then putting something weird for me to read out. Okay. Should we get down to, um, should we get down to some collaboration, a little bit of music? I thought we could dive in. Um, you guys submitted a lot of reason files and I thought I would just grab a couple and we could uh, play around with them again and see what we come up with here. So, um, oh, here, I saw DJ Divix. You're, I saw you in the chat and I see you down here in the, in the list of submissions. So maybe I will pull that up. Now, when I open this up, there's probably going to be a few seconds where we, uh, I lose audio, but I'll bring my audio back. It'll all be good. Let's give it a shot. Am I still Okay, we're still there. Now, hang on a second. I can already hear that we have a mastering chain on, so I'm going to turn that off, do a couple of things here to prep. Uh, should I put a little gate 
I'll put a little gate on myself. Okay, that's better for me. Okay. Okay, so here we got uh, DJ Divix here. Um, Rob, I guess uh, Rob is your, your first name. I, I'm going to, I'll call you Rob. It feels weird to refer to you by your DJ name uh, as I might refer to you a couple times here. But um, I'm looking over the uh, comments here. Uh, favorite way to experiment. Uh, I'm having so much fun stacking players lately. Chalism says, yeah, that is pretty cool. So, okay, let's, uh, let's dive, dive in here. Uh, let's take a listen to what Rob has sent in. I will say this. Um, I kind of like that it is nine bars. Um, I know, I mean, I, I don't fault anyone for, for what they've sent in or haven't sent in, but a nine bar loop with whatever this is like, six, seven tracks. Um, this tells me that it's an idea in the forming, but it's not a finished song. It's not a, a thing where I'm going to listen to it and just go like, Oh, uh, you're done. You're good. Don't nothing for me to do. So let's take a listen to what uh, Rob's got here and check it out. Okay, cool. Um, Rob, this is a nice little vibe. I like, I like what you got going here. Um, and I'm, I'm probably going to listen to this a little bit and just kind of get a sense of what's happening and what's making it, what, what makes this tick. And, um, let's figure it out. So we've got a couple of pianos here. Okay, so that's nice. And I presume that's coming from, I think it's probably this line right here. Yeah, okay, so that's the same thing. But Rob has bounced it and then bounced it again. Whoa, that's very exciting. Let's turn that off. Okay, let's see what this one is. Oops. Aha. Yeah, okay, so we got a, a backwards piano, and when we put those together, I presume they play together nicely. That's actually really nice. Rob, I really like that idea, because what I think Rob has done, if I'm not mistaken, in fact, I'm going to temporarily attempt to uh, recreate Rob's efforts here. If I move this down here and I just reverse it, it's going to, let's see here. Yeah, <laughs> that does not work. It's not, it's not as simple as Rob just reversed his, um, his audio, his bounce. In fact, I'm kind of curious. How did he do it? Did he... Maybe he reversed the MIDI. And then he bounced it. And then what you end up getting... Then, then you reverse the audio. I think that's, I think that's what he did. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's probably what he did. And Rob, let me know, uh, Rob, in the comments. And, and for you guys, uh, DJ Divix in the comments is, is Rob here. Um, let me know if that's what you did, that you reversed the MIDI, then bounced the audio again, then reversed the audio. And what you end up with is a reversed sound that keeps pace with the piano. And so I'm just going to sing your praises for a little bit here, Rob, so they appreciate everything you're doing here. So what you see is the envelope of the piano is decaying. And for that same chord, there's a, a corresponding swell going on in the reverse. So you get this, this duality of one note going chung, another one going yung, and it makes for this interplay. Let's uh, play it again. Let's 
That is cool. I like it. I wonder if to make it, can I make it even more obvious if I, I'm just going to pan it just temporarily for you guys. To, for those that want to hear the separation a little more, we'll put one one way and one the other way. Let's pan it even more to make it more obvious. In fact, I'm not actually mad at a panned version. Let me put it back center. Hmm, hmm. I like them both. When you when you put them when you pan them center, it's one cohesive sound. When you pan them uh, wide stereo, it becomes a little more two different things with a spot in the middle. What um what do you guys think? Should we should we explore? Well, you know, we could do too. I wonder if we could even, I'm going to look into automating the pan knobs and um, maybe we can make it a situational thing on the phrase. Like da, 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 da. And then we switch to here, a wide thing. So here I'll go wide and then here, let's go wide. Okay. Now let's take a listen. It should jump. I hope you guys are getting stereo. Uh, Gustavo says pan, they sound better. Let's take a listen. Now we're going to kind of move them apart. Are we overthinking? Let's do it for the whole phrase. Okay. Now, just for the sake of it, let's see if we did a shorter interval back and forth. Let's go bar by bar. Hmm. Hmm. Let's do it. Okay. So the first half of the phrase is going to be going back and forth on a bar by bar bake basis. Then it's going to go to the more sort of call and response basis. about you guys. I mean, I got to make my own decisions here, I guess, but um, I kind of think this is kind of interesting and I'm going to do it and I'm going to commit to it because why not? But I mean, already this is a, uh, a thing we can consider that, you know, you, you have this part and we can create, you know, panning doesn't need to be an either or panning can be a living, breathing thing that we can, we can play around with. And so we can do that through automation. And we did. Okay, let's take a look at what else is going on in this and then figure out a little more to do with it. Okay, let's see what this is. Well, this one, because this is obvious. He's put down just basically a kind of placeholder. Which is a nice uh, kick. And, and oh, wait, are you seeing this? Are you guys seeing the name of this kick drum sample? Can I show it to you in a bigger way? No, I just got to wiggle my mouse. Bass drum 707. Are we, are we to believe that there is a, a correlation or is it just serendipity? Maybe it's his 707th bass drum sample. But anyway, okay, so Rob's just got that. It's a nice, nice kick drum. Mark thinks it needs some more oomph. Maybe. Um, let's uh, take a look. What else is going on? Okay. 
does that let's take a look here yeah okay so because he bounced it um and this is a not a not a good nor bad choice this is just a thing um he it this uh, ethereal sound starts from nothing so you actually hear the swell when the loop repeats you're going to hear it kind of suck down to nothing again and that's uh that is not a bug that may be a feature that kind of makes it sound nice it's a it's a nice thing holding down some of that low end let's take a let's take a listen to how the loop you know we got used to hearing this on its own which is nice but um when you add just if all you do is add this into it the three things It's nice. There's a little click. Let me take a little. Do you hear? I'm hearing it in one of my ears. My right ear, I think. There's a click that's probably a matter of just this bounce. I think it's over here. Let's, um. This is not an uncommon thing that you can get little clicks. In fact, maybe I'll spend a quick second to talk about why that happens and what the solution is. Let's, to do that, I'm going to zoom way in. Okay. Yeah, okay, we can, we can show this. So, audio waveforms, we're looking at the audio waveform. I'm going to go even taller. Thank you, Reason Engineers, for making the vertical zoom unlimited. So, uh, if we're looking at this waveform here, and um, the waveform that you're seeing here, in fact, let me switch to my camera for a second. The waveform, when we see that waveform, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spare you guys a long rant on how absolutely fascinating I find this. But what we're seeing is a, a transfer of air pressure <laughs> through various mediums from the thing that makes the sound to the thing that hits your ear. And that's a little different in the digital domain, you know, but yeah, you've got an instrument, an instrument. Uh, resonates the body of the instrument literally moves back and forth and pushes air that air travels across the room it gets to your eardrums it the air pushes your eardrum in a sympathetically equal way which then causes a muscle and to to move inside the tympanic membrane and that converts to electrical signals and those electrical signals are experienced through your brain as the miracle of sound well the same thing is happening here we have a uh a waveform that goes up and down that we're starting now at the electrical side. We have an electrical signal that goes up and down and that then comes out of headphones and those headphones have to do the same thing your eardrum does, but in the opposite direction, it's, it's moving back and forth, not to receive the sound, but to take the electrical energy and actually push it. The, the speakers inside my headphones are wiggling back and forth to push air. And that's now recreating just like the way the instrument body was resonating that speaker is resonating okay we up to speed on the basics of the medical miracles of uh of sound transfer okay if you understand that then it will help you understand why you get clicks in your audio because the when you look at a waveform and you think of that speaker moving back and forth the zero point in a waveform is the speaker at rest when the amplitude is really loud on one side of that waveform, that's when the, the, the cone may be pushed out. And then what happens after the sound um, pushes out? It goes the other way. It pulls back and it pushes out and it pulls back and it pushes out. And as it's doing that, it's crossing its resting point. If we stopped playing sound, it would be doing this and suddenly it would just go bunk, and it would go back to rest, right? That's the midpoint of a waveform. Now, what happens if your waveform doesn't start at the rest point. What if it starts here or it starts here in my headphones or a speaker? Well, what happens is the speaker is a real physical object. It can't, it, it can't jump instantly to that point. It'll try, but it can't do it. And so in its attempt to jump, the sonic sound that we hear is a click. 
it's it's the attempt for the speaker to reproduce an instantaneous jump in time that it can't do. And so, okay, now with that in mind, that was a long rant, but I always find it kind of interesting. With that in mind, now take a look here. Do you see, um, I, now I don't know exactly where the midpoint is because there's a stereo file, but I can tell you that this crossover right here is a perfect example of a speaker that isn't able to get to rest. It's tr we're trying to go, we're trying to jump the, the ramp here, or in, in the case of a loop, if we're looping back to bar one, we're probably jumping down somewhere here. Well, oh no, we'd be jumping because it's a loop. We'd actually be jumping to that same point, but just back at bar one. So we're trying to have the, the speaker jump and it, it ain't working. So what is the solution? Well, there's a couple solutions. We could do things with crossfades. We could do a lot of things. What I'm going to do, <laughs> this is a seven minute rant to tell you just put a little, put a little fade on your clips there. You can even see, do you see that? See that you actually smoothing out. And now our, our speaker is not trying to jump quite so much. How long of a fade do you need to put it on, uh, on your clip handles? That's up to you. You want to try and keep them short. The, the concept would be as short as they need to be without being, um, you know, uh, audible, I guess would be the thing. So anyway, Let's back up and see if that actually is the source of our click. I hope you guys don't mind some of those technical tangents. Um, I They are kind of useful to know, I think, because, you know, I, I saw in the comments, somebody said that uh, clicks can kill a great mix. Yeah, they can. And, you know, I, you know, I know I started this whole thing with a, a rant against professionalism, though it really wasn't a rant against professionalism. But I started with this idea that we don't need to be so worried about professionalism. But there does come a point when you do, and that is when you, if you're sending your stuff out to a mix engineer or you're collaborating with someone and you, you want to send them stems, you just you don't want to send them cl clicky audio. So let's take a listen and see if that fixes us. Oh, I might need, well, actually, yeah, wait, I'm going to, because we're looping, I would need to come here and put a little fade at the top as well. I'll just put a little one in there, just ever so tiny. Let's take a listen. Okay, there's a little one in there. I wonder if that's still, that could be coming from here, but it's way better than it was. Let's take a listen. There we go. Yeah, okay, it was just the other one. There we go. Click free audio, ta-da! Okay, cool. So now we have a nice little loop. Um, I think... Rob does the same thing twice. Let me just take a listen. Yeah. So since I tweaked the clicks, I'm going to double this like so. And uh, let's see, I'm still exploring what he's got here. Let's take a listen to this one. You guys hear the click? Do you hear it? Do you hear it? You'll hear them all the time once you're aware of them. I'm going to throw in just a little crossfade. It, it becomes uh, particularly something to keep in mind when you're doing things the way Rob's done here, where he's got, um, he's done a lot of bouncing, which is cool. Boun you know, that's a cool way to kind of, one of the cool things about this workflow style is that you're committing yourself to this audio and you can, you know, you sort of go like, all right, this is what I got. Now, what can I do with it in this form rather than keeping it as MIDI? When you have it as MIDI, you might always go back and, you know, want to rethink it. 
but you can't rethink it. It's audio. You're locked in. Okay. So I think that's, oh wait, what is, is this something? What's going on here? Whole bunch of nothing there. It is a ethereal compass. Aha, uh -huh. VST plugin. Oh, serum. Okay. But we don't hear anything. Why don't we hear anything? We should, should we assume that nothing is happening there? So muted. No. All right. It is quite possible that uh, for whatever reason, Rob's not using that. So we won't either. Okay, cool. Um, so now what we've effectively done is we've done a little bit of a... Um, uh, Pan automation, we've kind of cleaned up his audio. We're kind of now ready to maybe dig into where we might go with this. Um, Mark, just to keep my eye on the comments, Mark Swing says that uh, you could also, another way you could handle these clip, uh, the clip handles and stuff is sometimes, you know, the audio, there may be more audio past the point of where the clip ends. And so if you drag out, you get a little, get a little extra audio. You could do a crossfade. Totally valid, correct, Mark. You could do that. Um, when you're dealing with bounces, that's usually not true or normalized audio. Usually, um, unless it's been shortened after the fact, usually the um, the audio ends at the clip boundaries. So um, someone says maybe I have a different version of uh, Serum. That might be true. And uh, <laughs> Rob says, I don't remember what I used the Serum for. Well, uh, nothing now, Rob. So I guess we're we're leaving it out. Okay, now what am I going to do with this? What, what is my contribution to Rob's little idea here? You know what I think I want to do? I like this. I like this. I like this mood. I like this vibe. He's kind of created a little soup of vibe that I want to, I want to swim. <laughs> I want to swim in the soup of his vibe. Is that a, is that a thing? I don't think that's a thing. I think I've combined words in a way that don't go together, but I like what he's got going on here. And so I actually kind of want to, I think I want to embrace a couple of things here. One, I want to embrace his commitment to bouncing things and being like, that's what I got. And I'm going to work with that. And so I think I want to, I want to do something similar. And the other thing I want to do is I want to, channel my inner Carly Rae Jepsen and Jack Antonoff and, and say, what, what is the playful thing that I could do with this? And so I could start adding instrumentation and arrangement and try to find, Oh, I got to write a hook melody and all that. But the playful thing to do that would honor Rob's uh, commitment to bouncing and things like that would maybe be to turn this into a Rex loop and play around with it as a Rex loop. So, Let's do that, shall we? In order to do that, though, I'm going to do... I'm going to mute the drums. We're going to treat this as our sample. And um, let's go ahead. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... <laughs> plucky banjo. No banjo this week, guys. Um, I'm going to bounce uh, mixer channels. Let's see if I can talk to you while I do this. If I, if I go away, just stare at me while I do this and then I'll be back in a second, but I'm going to bounce mixer channels, um, inside the song. I'm going to bounce the master channel, master fader to a new track in the song. Am I still, Oh, I'm still here. Good. I can talk through this while I do it. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> I'm going to deselect that channel. I'm going to choose the master section. I'm going to, Oh, for just good housekeeping, we're going to normalize. We'll apply the mixer channels. We're going to make it a loop. We're going to make it new tracks in the song and make sure nothing else funky is going on. No. Okay, cool. So now effectively this is like exporting it, but instead of exporting it, I'm actually just going to bring it into 
the song that we're in. Now I'm going to click OK while it does this. I'm going to be silent for hopefully just a few seconds while it does that. And then I'll be back with you. I'll see you on the other side. Am I back? I'm back. That was not bad at all. All right. You know, sometimes I, I dread with these short ones. It's uh, not, not a problem, but if it's a big file with a lot of audio, you can get into that uh, waiting for pre-calculation thing. And that doesn't make for good television. So <laughs> thankfully this one didn't have that. Let's take a listen. We should just be hearing now on this master section that's bounced. We should be hearing just the exact same thing that we had going on before, but just now it's a waveform. Great. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into slice mode. So I, I, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys ever get into making your own Rex loops. You can make anything in reason into a Rex loop and load it into the Dr. Octorex loop player. And there's any number of things you can do once you get there. But, um, you do that from when you double click on audio or if you come up to the top here and choose slice edit mode, entering slice edit mode is where this happens. I could, for example, if I just took this file and chose bounce clip to Rex loop, there it is. Now it is a Rex loop in my song. And if I were to, well, here, if I just drag that in, if I just hit run, we're going to hear the same thing again. Okay. But we are not going to do it that way. I'm going to delete that. In fact, should I, can I, will I delete this one? Yeah, cool. Okay. But, oh, actually, wait, you know what? Hang on. Should, can I go backwards? Yay. Yay. Hooray for undo. Okay. Um, this is, this is the point I was going to get at though. Um, Look at all those slices. There's like a whole bunch of slices there, which are cool. And in fact, we can play those slices on our keyboard. Let me see if I can get this happening. Yeah. So we have all of these slices now mapped onto keys on my keyboard. Let's see. If I do it, if I do it quick enough, you actually hear the loop playing back. Right. Um, but some of what you'll notice on these slices is that some of them are like that. There's not a ton that I find musically exciting about that. <laughs> not much there either. So some of the slices are really small and it would be not unreasonable to ask, well, where are those? happening there. Okay. Um, where are those slices coming from? What is making those slices short or long or how are we determining how all of these little slices arrived? I should say all of these little slices I didn't switch back yet arrived. Well, I'll show you the answer. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to turn off auto there. Great. Okay. Now, so let me go back to my audio and the answer is that Every one of those rec slices relates to every one of these slice markers. And what reason has done is it is attempted to, by looking at transients, it's attempted to figure out where the slices of audio are. If you've ever messed with recycle, you can get a lot more deep with the sensitivity of that slice threshold. But to show you as an example, here, let me just join some audio. Let's take a super easy example. If I go into slice mode here, what it has done is it said, okay, that's a, tra a transient. And then it's seeing, whoops, it's seeing the end as another potential transient. That's just the way this kick drum is formed. But um, it, it's kind of done a very simple um, transient detection there. Here, it's having to guess a little more because Rob's music is so, um, it's so kind of ethereal. It's kind of got all this vibe, right? So what I want to do before I make my Rex loop 
is I kind of actually want to guide it a little more on, I want to give it bigger slices because what I'm going to do is I'm going to play those on my keyboard to kind of juggle the, the beat. That's at least what I'm thinking is I'm going to try and juggle this a little bit like it's a sample, but I want to have things that are like, see this thing here that is just, can you see it? Yeah, you can see my mouse moving. Um, th this thing here or these two here, those are all really short. And I, those aren't going to do it for me when it comes to juggling. So let's take a look and let's just clean up a little of this. Okay, so I'm going to treat, so that one's still good, but I'm going to get rid of this one. So now this is, this one slice will just be bum, 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 just that on his own. Okay. I think what I'm probably realizing I'm getting to now is that I'm going to be probably chopping this up almost into its chord components. Yeah. That one there. I'm going to, on some of these, I'm going to actually move where I'm going to delete some. I'll click on them and delete. And then on other ones, I'll actually move where this slice is if I think I know better than the than the transient detector. And in this case, I think I do. I actually am interested in that right on the beat. So, okay, so now I've got four slices. I'm gonna move this one and this one too. No, nope, that's fine. Delete that. Okay, I'm gonna delete this slice. There's no rhyme or reason. This isn't like a, I'm, I'm kind of just giving myself broader slices. I'm not necessarily, um, there's no rule to what I'm doing, right or wrong. And we'll find out when I load this in, if we've gone not, you know, judicious enough or too, too broad in our slices, we'll find out. But, this is the part where you guys just get to watch me work. And not, not work it in the Beyonce sense. Let's see here. This one is short, but I'm gonna leave it. Oh wait, oh, but I'm gonna move this. Yeah, okay, so it'll be. Delete this. And this one, we're going to delete these two short ones. I think I need to move this. Here's a bunch of short ones. Delete this. Okay. Pull this one out, pull this one out. Okay, so I, I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm kind of going, I'm gravitating towards trying to find where the notes change. So you've got here and then here and here. Those are all different chords and notes. So I'm trying to just find those and I'm generally speaking, I'm pulling out the moments. Um, Oh, can you manually play slice? I don't know. Can you? No. Oh, you can. Mowgli, you can play him with the speaker tool. Oh. Mowgli, I didn't know that. I'm very excited by this. Mowgli asked in the comments, can you randomly play slices? Um, I don't know if he meant what I think he meant, but as I took the question to mean was, can you audition slices? And it caused me to look up in the uh, tools and realize that there is a speaker tool. Oh. Well, this makes the process a lot less guesswork. Um, but I'll, I'm almost done anyway, so. I'm gonna pull this one off. And that might be, maybe we'll just do it for, since it's a, it's a repeated phrase, so. What we've got now is a far more, if you just compare this to this one, this one has far more slices. This has a more manageable number of slices. George McDonald, nice Mowgli. Yes, correct. Nice. 
David says it's control click the slices. Oh, are you guys teaching me things? He's a liar. David, you're a filthy liar. No, it's probably a, maybe a Windows. Yeah, it's a Windows thing. Look at that. Command on a Mac. Control on Windows, command on a Mac, and I'm toggling. Ah. Oh. I've learned more from you today than uh, I expected to. Thank you, guys. That's great. So, okay. So anyway, my point was, if you look at this, you've got all these slices here with all those little short transients. When you look here, you've got a more manageable thing. Let's now, I don't know if you need to select all, but I select all, and then I go bounce to new Rex loop. There it is. And now let's drop this guy in here and we'll expand this. And when you look now, remember how all those red lines we had because we had a doubly long loop that was, you know, instead of five bars, it was, or four bars, it was eight bars. And it had all these little extra slices in there. And so now we've got, we've got, we've got our things. Let me switch uh, this way. And I can, I can start looking at ways that I can basically reimagine his, Rob's um, little phrase, you know, so we could do it the, well, as he does it. You know, I got to know his slice lines, but. Right, so I can, I could recreate what he's done, but why would I do that? So uh, instead I can play around with you know, trying to find other little, like, the weird thing with doing this is that the keys are not related to the pitch. So like, for example, this note, when I go down, it actually goes up in pitch because that, that's just a higher pitch slice is on that key, which in some ways is actually kind of, I mean, well, not in some ways, in a lot of ways, it's kind of nice because it gets you out of thinking. You can only think about what sounds good and not what makes sense on a keyboard. If you're a, a keyboard player, th this will absolutely um, help you get out of your own you know, habits. So I just got to figure something out. I'm going to try and figure out some kind of little like juggled hook. Yeah, okay. Something like that. Let's uh let me just try that. I'm going to put that down in the sequencer. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to turn on the click. And let me just see. Hang on. Oh, ha. <laughs> I have to turn off enable loop playback. If I have, if I leave enable loop playback on, uh, let me actually just make some adjustments here. I'm going to go to, should I go to this one? No, this one, no, this one. I'll do that for now. Um, if I go, just so you can see a little better, this little button that's up here, enable loop playback. If I uh, leave this on every time I hit the space bar, see that run kicks off. So I'm going to turn that off and now, I can go back and do what I was going to do. What was I playing? Something something like this. Let's see here. I'm gonna play around. I might I might do a couple of different options, but maybe I'll just run tape while I do this, in case something happens.
a thing I keep hitting a note that I don't love. Let me go back for a second. That should be that one. Okay, let me take a listen to that. That would be an acceptable section. Let me just grab that for a second. Okay. Dare I quantize? Cool. Um, and now I'm going to just add a little bit more vibe to that, maybe with a reverb. Let's go to the old tried and true. And I'm going to add, I kind of want this to, I think, pump a little bit. So I'm going to add a side chain via synchronous. Let's set up our loop for a second here. Okay, let's pump in a little bit. I used the dry wet knob. If anybody uses these um, side chain effects on synchronous, I'm using the dry wet knob to just not pump quite so much. If I make it full wet, it's going to pump a lot. And since a lot of the notes actually are happening on the beat, it, uh, it takes away our notes entirely. So I'm, I'm just pulling it back with the dry wet knob to be a little more subtle. Okay, I'm looking in the chat and I'm seeing a request for a house beat or a 909 kick. Um, let's uh, we'll go to let's go to our deep house and let's just take a look here. I, I'm trusting I'm trusting in you guys. This is now becoming a comment based collaboration. That's something. That's maybe something too. I should have made note of the first thing I said that's maybe something. Let's start with this one. What was the other one? There was another one up top, though. I just out of curiosity. Was that? Oh, oh, H dub, I think it was. Yeah. Let's take a listen to this one. I'll just drag that one in to swap it. think we like one or two i think i liked the first one this one a little better hub oh hub was the one wait well, you guys let me know in the comments simpler the better okay um well i think what you're saying is maybe you guys like not new york drum you like the hub one better 
that versus this? What do we think? What do we think? Oh, first one, first one. People are saying, oh, okay, I got to I gotta run my own race. So I, I agree. For, for whoever is playing along at home, I think I agree with you guys. I think I like this sort of classic New York... I think I like that too. Now, um, let's figure out, we got something to do. We've, we still got Rob's original thing here. Let's take a listen for a second. Oh, wait a second. We got to, let's create a, um, whatchamacallit, a uh, pattern lane. And I'm only going to bring in my drum beat with my juggle part. There we go. And I'm going to mute that and I muted this. One. Wait a second. What am I hearing? Where's that drum coming from? Uh, oh, derp derp. I did it on the wrong track. That's why. This is going to go there. There we go. Okay. Now we don't have our drums in the intro. You know what? So yeah, I kind of want to, I'm going to honor Rob's very excellent original musical idea by keeping it in place. And then I'm thinking what we do is we like, I'm going to do a whole full bar there. I'm thinking of like maybe something where we're kind of like, we're going to filter it. Let me see here. I got to figure out which tracks these are. Uh, everything except master section band. Let me rename this. Um, what do we want to call? We'll call this juggle. So everything except juggle and New York drums, I'm going to now group. So I'm going to select everything here. I'll group them. I realize that groups my own. So let me actually move me back to the master section and I'm going to label myself Ryan and I'll move that over here too. So now we've got, and we'll call this, um, Rob intro. And now on its own, it's going to be, it should be everything. It's nothing. Where did everything go? What happened? Oh, I, <laughs> I know what happened. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. I had all the tracks selected when I routed me to the master section. Now we're going to call this Rob intro. And now when I play, we should hear everything. Okay. And... Then we're going to, now that we have that as its own thing, we can jump into the rack and let's put a filter in here. What are my options for filters? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? What should we do? Acid diode ladder filter. That sounds exciting. Good old D filter. Can't go wrong. Classic filter. They put it into the name. It's a classic. I haven't used this one. Maybe we'll... Let's try that. Let's see what we got going on here. Magnasonic. Don't do me wrong. Cut off resonance. Okay, resonance I'm going to keep uh, low because I don't think I want a big, like, um, I don't want to hear that sort of frequency sweep. I'm going to make it, a, I think, a high pass. What a spice. These are things I don't know. And also... I'm hearing, what am I hearing? Where is that coming from? Oh, I'm hearing the, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing the um, send effects separate. That's probably okay. Yeah, actually like by the send effects still doing their thing, as I filter up, I am basically, it feels like the, the reverb is getting more wet, which ain't a bad thing. So here, let me show you. If we were to, for example, over the course of 
the last five bars, four bars, let me change the color. Over the course of the last bar, I'm going to do a high pass sweep. And I may have lied. Maybe we will actually do a little bit of resonance. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. And now I might edit the audio too. Like I want it to hang there. Let's have it hang there, shall we? I say we shall. So I'm going to delete that. I think I actually want to delete even more. Might just be a eighth note. Bink. Let's razor all that off. Let's delete it. Yeah. Okay. So now let's just listen to Rob's intro. It should go four bars regular. Then it should start the sweep. And then it's going to hang in kind of empty space. Uh oh, we've got a troll. Hang on. Do I do I get to ban them? Put user in timeout? Let's try that. Okay. We made it though. Guys, we arrived. We got a we got a spammer. <laughs> um, okay, well I think I got him. I at least put him in a timeout. I wonder if there's a way. Surely there's a way I should have looked into this. Oh, hide user on this channel. There we go. Bink. Okay. There we go. I think they are no more. Okay, cool. Now let's take a listen. Uh, four bars regular. Then we're going to do a sweep. Then it's going to hang in midair. And then, then we're going to bring in our little house jam. Right? Now, um, I want to consider one other thing. This is a, I'm going to get philosophical here for a second. This is actually something I'm, I'm going to be probably making a tutorial about coming up because it's a, a topic that, that me and, and this guy, Tim also at reason studios, we've been discussing that we enjoy about music is there's moments when we work on these grids, all of our timings tend to be perfectly timed, you know, two bars, four bars, two beats, four beats, one measure, you know, it's, everything is like a perfect interval because by default this is a perfectly rock solid clock and so watch what happens when we do this little uh little filter thing i have it hanging for one bar and then our beat comes in like this right and it's not wrong it's just perfect and maybe perfect isn't cool, or maybe it is. But um, one of the things that happens in, when a real band plays and when you listen to albums that were being done on tape before we had these absolutely rock solid sequencers that work and quantize and snap to grids and everything was perfect, you tend to find these more natural breaths in music. And this is a perfect example where the, the song is taking this little breath and in, and we can ex we can make it feel almost more traditional by making it imperfectly long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the transport. I'm going to add a tempo automation. And I'm going to basically just, for one bar, I'm going to try at least. This could be a disaster. But I'm just going to slow down the tempo almost arbitrarily. Let's go to from one from 100 to 120 
And all I'm going to do is it's just what I'm doing is I'm introducing a not correct amount of pause. It's going to be a little extra long, hopefully. <laughs> Let's hope this doesn't sound dumb. Um, but it, it, it just is going to make it, it adds that little element of anticipation. So you hear what I mean? Like if I, if I mute that for a second and we listen again, it's going to be exactly one bar. And what happens is because this pulse is so defined and already in place, your body will just keep clicking along and it'll feel that one, two, three, four. And then the beat comes in and it's kind of like, yeah, but when you, when you get rid of that, when, when it just goes that little bit extra, it causes your kind of body and your brain to go, wait, what? Oh, and then it, by the time your brain is processed, oh, it didn't happen, then it happens. And then it sort of, you know, it just has a little more naturalness to it. Take a listen. This is without it. And here it is with it. We're making a little extra long. See, this is like a little too long. And we could go the other way. We could make it just a little bit too fast. Let's try that. I actually think I might like just a little too fast. Maybe we could go even faster. Should we go even faster? Who's to stop us? Not me. Yeah, I like that. So, what the heck did I just do? There we go. Um, so yeah, th this is uh, that's something I'm thinking of of doing a tutorial coming up where I talk about different ways to kind of add those like the naturalness of tempo imperfection into your music to make it live and breathe a little more. Let's just play it from the top again, and then maybe we'll add a little more, one another extra little something, but not too much more. Okay, now, dare I, you know what, I'm going to check something out here. I'm going to cheat and use a sample, but I'm going to maybe add just a little, what's called an uplifter. In order to do this, I'm going to need to, let me just modify so you guys can hear at home while I do this. Uh, can I add the finder? Yes. Okay. I'm going to just turn the finder on on my little rowdy thing. So you guys, hopefully you're going to hear these as I audition them. I've got these little samples of, um, these, uh, swoops and swells and stuff. Um, these things. There we go. That's a nice, simple, tasteful one. So let's drag this guy in and so now I'm going to, let's see here, we're going to modify this a little bit. We're going to transpose it a little bit. We're going to turn it down a little bit. Turn it down a lot more. We're also going to maybe EQ it a little bit. Which one is oh, There it is. This is a folder of vengeance samples I bought ages ago, and I just find them very useful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, use your mouth for that. Right, that's the old um, Adam, Adam Fielding specialty, right? He would use his nose for it. Let's do this a little more. Change the transpose a little bit. And we're going to add a reverb to it. I'm kind of just mucking around with it, but 
turn it down a little bit. Pull that back a little bit. Okay. Sure. That'll work for now. I might, I might muck around a little bit with uh, more if I were doing this in a real sort of way. But should we add, um, should we add another thing? We've been at this for an hour and a half. Uh, but should we add a another element to this part? What would go here, guys? What would be the thing that we add? We could add. I don't know. I don't know what we could add. I'm curious. I gotta maybe I gotta figure out the key before I even were to do anything else. But um, I'm I'm thinking. Yeah, the nasal riser exactly. Um, I'm thinking. I'm looking at the comments while I'm thinking, which that's a terrible combo. But I'm thinking that maybe I could do. If I put a piano on here, I know we got a lot of piano going on already. In fact, you know what? Yeah. We've got too much piano going on. Let's... Well, who doesn't love Complex One? And we're going to... Well, for now, we're going to start by changing that. Oof. That's pretty damn good. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, what I was originally thinking of, and maybe I am still thinking of it, if I go into the melodic patches, I was thinking of something with quad note generator that is triggered from a key. Um, but I got to figure out what key we're actually... Hey, Rob, may, maybe if you're super clever, you can tell me... Oh, Rob is suggesting bass. I'm looking here. Bass line. Yeah, you want a bass line. Um, you know what, actually? Well, hang on. Isn't there a thing? I feel like there's a thing... in the quad note generator. Bass lines. Maybe let's just do this for a second. Uh, Rob, if you're in the comments, let me know the key. If not, I'm going to grab a guitar and try and figure it out real quick. I'll figure it out on the birthday boy. Mark says, you have the MIDI file right there. Yes, I do. If I were to go in, I'm not, I'm so more guitar minded that it's just faster for me to grab an instrument and go, okay, got it. You know, and now I know where I am. We're in, um, it depends how we want to count that, but we could call that a flat minor. Would we? No. Yeah. So we could call that a flat minor. Or we could call that B major. I'm going to call it B major. Am I? We're going to find out. Let's see how weird that goes. And let's just see what happens. Let's see if that jives. Oh, wait. I should probably... Well, no. Let's stay on the melodic ones for a second. Rob in the comments confirms B major man versus machine. Ryan Harlan beats his poking around the MIDI file with his uh, ear. So, okay, let's take a look here. I have to find a combination of 
maybe I should do this. Maybe I shouldn't be on complex one. If we're doing a baseline, I was going to be doing something else with complex one, but let's switch to monotone because that is, it's a bass machine. Let's go to Berlin. No. Okay, we'll start there. Let's not do a bass pulse. Let's just see what other... That's interesting. I wonder how that sounds with this. I'm going to have to turn it up. I'm going to temporarily idly turn up this bass. Maybe I will just be a regular human being and play it myself instead of using a player. I still need a little bit of a different sound though, hearing it with it. So many subs. Let's do this. We're going to put a scales and chords in here to keep me honest. B major. Okay. Yuhani says the Mr. Fingers patch. Does he know something? Mr. Fingers, let's hear, let's check it out. Ah! Yuhani. I think Yuhani just just got his way into a three-way collaboration here between me, Rob, and himself. Let's uh, see here. A little bubbly. Hang on. Honey, you're fired. No, <laughs> it's a fine patch. <laughs> it's not doing it for me. But let's see. I think I'm. I, I there's a, there's that tricky thing with patches where it's like, what is what is interesting on its own and what works with the rest of the the track. Um, playing along D flat. Regmon Music says D flat minor works better. I'm sure. Someone can tell me the modal reason why that is the case. Let's check it out. I actually don't. I would think that there is a, there's a couple notes there where that's not going to be the case, but a couple notes where we'll be fine. Guys, am I going crazy or is it tuned a little differently? Let me just make sure I'm not. Okay, that's not, that's not tuned weird. Is it me or is it like, I kind of want it to be there. You hear that? 
when I play a B, I do believe it's not quite in tune. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe our, I was checking something. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lay blame here at uh, Rob, but Rob, something you may want to check if this is true is that um, the, the master tune, people bump this. I, I've had this happen all the time. People bump this master tune. It'll be like that. And now all of a sudden you're 61 cents sharp and you won't notice this because you don't live in this setting, but all of your synths, everything will be wrong and it'll drive you nuts. So everyone out there, like if you've got reason open, just double check that your master tune is actually set to um, zero cents because uh, you can save yourself and your collaborative partners uh, a heck of a lot of trouble there. But in this case, my connection is uh, correct. So I got to wonder if maybe it's possible the Rob's was um, not so much, but let's see, is there a way we can compensate for it here? Uh, well, I guess I could, it would be wrong of me to purposefully master tune off. Let's see. I am going to go back to B major. Not that that's going to help us here, but, um, Now sounds more okay. Maybe it was my... Maybe I was wrong. When I watch this back in the stream, I'm going to go, oh, because I didn't put it to D flat. I put it to D minor, but something like that. What are people talking about? What? Some, someone's pantsless? I'm not pantsless. You're pantsless. <laughs> No, it's not doing it for me, guys. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, hang on. Something like that. Let's put that down and work from there. Best baseline ever? No. I did not record enable. That's for the best. Here we go. Let's go from there. We are definitely going to quantize that one. And we're going to fix this little bum note. We're going to look at the second half of that. Got another bum note there. Let's fix that. And let's just make it slightly less bad. <laughs> I don't know how low do we go? This low? Put 
put that one in here too. Let's say that's the basics of our line. Now let's consider for a second our sound. I'm going to solo our bass line. And I see a request for finger bass. Was that Mr. Fingers? Is that what you're talking about? I think that's what uh, Yohani suggested. Once again, try the reason finger bass patch. All right, all right. Everyone wants finger bass. Are we talking Mr. Fingers or are we talking finger bass? Let's take a look. Maybe we're talking about something else. Okay, there's not one called finger bass, so I'm going to assume that all the talk of fingers is Mr. Fingers. Okay, this is your next shot. I mean, let's listen to it in the thing. You guys really swear by this one, huh? Okay, I if this is what you're suggesting, I was, I'm seeing calls for FM pluck bass as well. FM pluck bass. Let's take a listen to that one. <laughs> And I see Mark is saying it's in the factory. If I do a search for finger bass, are we going to find something? Finger bass. There's three of a mark. Four technically. But let's see. Electric bass, electric bass, and synth bass. Okay, so we're going to... Let's, let's try them. Mark, what have you done to us? <laughs> let's take a listen to this one. <laughs> Mark, I know that's not what you were suggesting, but I'd love to believe that that is what you really were suggesting. That you were like, you know what we need? This bass needs to sound more like a quacking duck. <laughs> Perfect. It's perfect. You're welcome, DJ Divix. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that is, um, I'm assuming that's not what uh, Mark had in mind. Let's um, pop this one on. It's the only other finger base of your last shot, Mark. Ah, I bet you this is the one he was going for. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I can understand where it could be the, the place that we build from, but let's, um, I'm going to go back to monotone for a second because there was a couple in there that were kind of worth, I was starting to understand to those that were suggesting, what was the one again? Mr. Fingers. Um, it's got a, like that, that's a very sort of 303 style thing, which, um, to those of you watching over in, uh, Europe and, and into Acid House, I could see that this has some of that Acid House-ish uh, quality. You start doing this little sample juggle with a little 303 and... It could go in that direction, certainly. And then there was the other one. What was the other one that was... Working for us. Uh, do, 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 do. I lost it. I had another one where I was like, oh, that's like a thing. It was a sort of German name. Aren't all the base patches German names? Was it Red Cell? No, I don't think so. That's not a German name. No. Although, you know, we could shorten the release on this one. It would be... Turn up the chorus. There's a lot of directions we could go with this. Um, I'm going to go back to just in in honor of Yohani. I'm going back to Red Fing, uh, to Mr. Fingers. Um, there's a lot of directions we could go with this, and there's more things that that people could and should do with it if they, uh, you know, if they were collaborating with Rob. In my world, where uh, our stream is kind of 
already past the time that I expected to be on with you guys. I think maybe we'll we'll call that our our jam here. Let's just take a look at what we did. We took Rob's very excellent starting place. We ran it through a filter that was closing up. So we got a, a sort of high pass filter build going on, which we then cut short so that the reverb tail lasted for a not correct mathematical amount of time before we come in with a sample juggled version of that same part. So, okay. That is, I think, where we're going to get to today. I'm going to make a couple of adjustments there, turn things down and muck with it, and then maybe I'll attempt to play myself out. Can I do that? Let's see how this works. This could all go so wrong. If I make Rob intro, well here, I'll make this, 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 and this into a group. Now if I turn this down, can I turn that? Yes, okay, good. So I will attempt to say goodbye to you guys with that going. It's been fun. It's always fun. And um, I hope you guys had fun today. Come back next week, because we're going to be back next week. Next week, we're going to come back. I'm going to have a guest next week. TBD as to who that will be. We'll make an announcement on that. But um, that we'll be, yeah, we'll have someone on. And we'll take a look at some of their music. Maybe you've heard of, you've heard enough of me for a little while fumbling through bass lines but i hope that you guys got a couple of cool things out of this certainly the the playful nature of sample juggling that is a uh, a thing that i almost think unless you're so sample minded you tend to not think of doing that you can just bounce you don't have to go out and import audio and do all that stuff you can just bounce the master fader to a new track in your song and go into slice mode and start chopping up slices in order to make your your sample and then load your sample in just like we did here. And it makes for a fun way to kind of play with ideas that you have and also can be a way if you're stuck, like I don't think Rob was particularly stuck here, but he, he had an eight bar thing and then the idea is where do you go from it? And um, this sent, can send you off in a whole new direction. And in fact, you could, you know, if Rob and I were working on this, we might drop into this sort of house vibe and then we might go into kind of a, a, a breakdown where things get all kind of pad vibey and stuff and maybe we'll bring in his original and then we build up again and then we break and then we go back to the sample juggle so there's you can go back and forth between those anyway I hope everybody had fun come back next week we will do this again mark my words and um, I hope you guys make some music in the interim and shoot us, you know, tweet us or, or send us stuff, tag us on Instagram, do all the normal things to point us towards what you guys are doing this week. Particularly if you do something with the idea of, of this sort of Rex juggling of your samples, or um, if you can uh, send me a better baseline than I wrote. <laughs> that won't be hard. Okay. All right, guys, have a great week. Always enjoyable. I'll see you next week. Thank you.